All right, so today we're going to be uh, talking about um, two philosophers. Uh, Simon will talk about Michelo Machiavelli, and I'll be talking about St. Francis of Assisi. So uh, let's get right into it. So, uh, Nicole Bernardo Machiavelli was born in Florence, Italy um, in 1469 and died in 1527. Machiavelli was a political philosopher and a diplomat for Florence, Italy, and um, the Florentine uh, Republic um, in the Italian Renaissance. Uh, he came to power after the Medici family fell in the um, Medici uh, exile. During his rise to power, Machiavelli's uh, family was pretty wealthy. His father was a lawyer and he received a formal education where he then became a secretary uh, for the city of Florence. He then became a diplomat um, for about 14 years and after that the Medici family uh, came back to power and he fell down and he was just a, he was a, like a semi-successful general at the time and then he uh, uh, was uh, banned, from, banned from the state and uh, was viewed more so as, a, as an enemy um, after, for what he had done during his 14 years as a diplomat. Uh, he went through a, form, a lot of forms of uh, torture. He spent time in jail where he did a lot of his writing. And uh, he was banished from the city, as I said. So, as I said before, he did a lot of his uh, uh, writing during his, uh, af after his experience um, in power. Uh, two major things he wrote was The um, Prince and uh, The Art of War. And he also wrote many poems during his time in jail. Um, an interesting thing is that um, even after uh, he was banished for Florence he, uh, and died of natural causes just like a small city outside, uh, he's t his tomb can be found uh, in a church just inside. Um, Machiavelli didn't become famous in, um, until many years after his death. Uh, his famous book, The Prince, was not even published until five years after he died. Um, and even for example, in, in Shakespeare, many of his writings and stuff, uh, a lot of the villains are viewed, um, I mean, are called as uh, Machiavelli, so he would found his way into the, the English language. So his uh, main claim was that the end justifies the mean. This can be, we can look at it as ourselves, um, like we, we go by this claim as well, like for example, cheating on a test. Um, you can't, you don't think that's like too un, unmoral, like you say, but because uh, it gets us to our end goal and it doesn't really hurt many people. Um, along with like lying on a resume, for example, um, it gets you your job, but it's uh, sort of unright in a way. Um, and then there's more so of a political view, and it's more significant, like lying on a, a politician, lying on their platform, it gets them to their end goal. But um, in the end, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not really right. Um, an example of a, like Machiavelli saying that end justifies the need is much more significant and brutal in his sort of ways. For example, like, taking over a new piece of territory or land or something. Um, he would, uh, like, a contemporary would, uh, after taking over the land, they would behead some people um, that would that was against him, that fought, that fought against him, like, just to show his, uh, forget to people to follow him, um, to, to view him the way he wants to be viewed, to be feared, um, to, to show his dominance. And then often, even after, like, his, his contemporaries, he would kill people that were very close to him to, again, show that his his followers and his people, how he, he wanted to be viewed, how he um, wanted to protect his state and protect his, uh, his title and his honor. Um, he also believed, believed greatly that it is better to be feared than to love if you cannot be both. Machiavelli believed that it is best to be feared to be loved. He thought that people will follow a leader who, will, uh, who they love most of the time, but as other factors such as other new loves, danger, and that made this love weaken, he wanted people um, this love can like easily be forgotten. Um, if a ruler is feared, he will be followed out of uh, a fear and fear of what happens if not supporting him. Um, he induced this fear in many ways, and he thought this this way he induced fear was uh, justified by his goal to end justifies the need. Um, Machiavelli uh, mocked the idea of political correctness today. For example, um, leaders we follow today, uh, we believe should be honest, have integrity, morality, intelligence, and um, we sh um, should be respected by the followers. Um, Machiavelli believed more so in wisdom, strategy, strength, bravery, and uh, ruthlessness. Um, uh, he gained his respect from his followers in, in different sort of ways, as, as I said before. He wanted to be feared and, and feared sort of what would happen if he was not followed. Um, 
he believed leadership was about the decisive um, exercise of power, not so much morality and, and doing the right thing for him being the nice guy, sort of. So in his, in his book I mentioned before, The Prince was his, his main, what he's been known for, it's a um, sort of just a summary of what this, this book told and was uh, some like major points is a state and monarchy, for example, can be, be taken by destroying the entire royal family. Um, if you're not a prince, it is possible to become one if you're well armed follow, um, and following the rulers of the past. Once you have a state, in order to keep it, any sort of resistance must be taken away using swift and cruel methods, like I said before, like beheading people of a, of a city. Um, also, to secure, you must win over the people, but um, you're not completely secure um, all the time because he, be he be uh, believed that um, even people around him, he could be betrayed easily, so he, that's the reason he took a lot of cruel manners. He killed a lot of people even close to him. Um, a, a good leader must appear good but have um, intentions of evil. Being thought of as cruel is something that is good because fear is the only thing that you can really control. You must use just deception. Um, being loved doesn't matter as long as, um, being loved doesn't really matter to him as long as he's not hated. Um, having protection around you is okay, but, for, um, but the people around you can uh, betray you, as I said before. And in action and indecisiveness will, will lose your power. So uh, a lot of people compare uh, Machiavelli and, and Donald Trump and, and call Donald Trump has Machiavelli ways. Um, this is just because they both mock the idea, as I said before, of political correctness. Uh, for example, mm -hmm. Donald Trump says a lot of things about like illegal, illegal immigrants saying, uh, viewing them poorly. He doesn't, Donald Trump doesn't really seem like the nice guy like we should really view him, um, more so a liar. Um, but this idea of not being known as the nice guy makes you follow for your other, uh, other ways other than just your morality and your niceness and, and more so to your political intentions and ideas. So in, in opposition um, would be uh, Frederick the Great. He wrote a book um, called the Anti-Machiavelli, like just straight up um, rebuttaling all, everything that he has said in the prints. Uh, Frederick the Great was more so uh, much different in his morality and his humanity and, and such. Uh, his ethics, he believed much more in ethics and humanity. Um, he believed that this, if this book fell into the uh, wrong hands of an ambitious prince, that it could uh, really ruin uh, humanity altogether. <clears throat> All right, so now I'll talk a bit about uh, St. Francis of Assisi. So he's quite different than what Simon just talked about with Machiavelli. Um, so St. Francis of Assisi was born in Assisi, Italy. Uh, he was a Catholic friar, and a friar is a member of a certain religious, uh, like, orders of men. Um, he was also a preacher, and he founded the Men's Order of Friars Minor and the Women's Order of St. Clara. And uh, he also um, founded a couple other friars, but these are two, the two major ones that he, uh, he founded. <coughs> So now just a bit of additional information about him. So what's interesting about St. Francis of Assisi was he was born like very rich into a wealthy family. <clears throat> As he grew older, he, he started to pray more often. Um, and then he received several visions from God. And these visions from God is what really changed who he was like as he grew older. Um, so <clears throat> what, he, what he used to have when he was growing up like a very rich, we wealthy life, God said to him that he, he needs to... Uh, change the, the Christian church so to, in order to do so he had to live live in poverty so St. Francis of Assisi knowing this he changed his life and rather to be paid by material objects such as like money and or like clothes uh, he gave all that up and his only what he lived for was to be repaid by God in the end uh, so he did not cherish like material things um, he also tried to view everyone as his brother and before obviously he did not because just living in a wealthy scenario, like he didn't view everyone as equal to him. Um, so also interesting was he was designated by the Pope Gregory as a patron saint of Italy, and he is now the patron saint for ecologists. Uh, this is a title honoring his love for animals and nature because as he tried to change his way of life, he found a deep love for nature and animals and connect with them. And also he was, he was known for like walking in fields of flowers and just connecting to the earth. Uh, in nature. 
strongly with that. And so his claim is that we're all brothers and should be grateful for charity rather than material objects. Um, so like I said before, he believed that everyone was equal and everyone was his brother. So <clears throat> once he received some of these visions from God, some interesting things that he did was right away is he stripped himself completely naked and just started singing and dancing, which was like uh, pretty crazy for him to do. And by doing so, <clears throat> he put himself at like the lowest level, like basically humiliating himself. But when people started like uh, throwing stuff at him and calling him names or whatever, he just kind of smiled and laughed because he started to not care. He was just gonna live, live his life like that. Uh, like what, what I kind of said already was God commanded him to rebuild the Christian church and to do so he had to live in poverty. And then uh, on the next slide here. <clears throat> so this, this is kind of opposing to uh, the religion of Hinduism because in Hinduism they have this specific caste system which places people in like a social hierarchy. Um, so this strongly opposes what St. Francis of Assisi claims that we are all equal. Um, because in this, in this caste system, there's specific levels for each people to be in, rather than what St. Francis of Assisi is trying to prove. But what's, what's uh, the biggest thing about St. Francis of Assisi is how he started, pretty much, if they had a caste system for where he lived, he would have been at the top. But through these visions from God, and uh, the, the, the way he tried to change his life, he put himself right at the bottom. And was, he was happy with that, knowing that he would be repaid by God one day. Uh, in the future, so um, so they're kind of connect Machiavelli and Saint Francis of Assisi. I guess they're both very different in their in their beliefs, as Machiavelli his claim is the end justifies the means, and I mean he'll sacrifice a lot just to get what he wants in the end. Where Saint Francis of Assisi views everybody <coughs> as like his equal, and that they need to work together in order to to be successful. Um, but saying that they both have their uh, own opinions and how the end will come and how, once again, for Machiavelli, it's just sacrifice whatever to get at the end, where um, St. Francis of Assisi believes that in the end God will repay him for the good that he's done in his life. And then, now I have a, a test, <laughs> I have a test to uh, um, test everybody's Machiavelli-ness. End the video now. Yeah.